You can just give me a page, say something hello, or. Okay, morning. good morning. Salam, can you hear me? Anyone morning, else? Morning. Can you hear me? Good morning to you. Well, I am assuming. Okay, it is fine. You're here with us. Please remind others um, to kind of, if you can inbox others to join, we're just 14 of us here today. Um, if you're able to just inbox others and tell them we are getting started now, that would be awesome, awesome, awesome. Good morning, Rafa. All right. Okay, guys, welcome to today's Thursday, the 23rd of June. Um, uh, daily, our daily stand up. And as usual, just not to sound like a broken record, this is a space to kind of, um, for people who are stuck, to kind of get them unstuck, for the lack of a better word. If you're struggling with something, bring it up and our tutors, our teams, and our community will be here to assist us. And I would say um, over this time, we've seen uh, a lot more participation going on, so which is a little bit good. And um, and yeah, we'll, we'll dive straight into today's uh, CPS. And before we kind of go in, stay straight into hearing from you guys, any announcements from the 10 Academy team? Anybody with any announcements? Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. So I have a couple of announcements. Um, one is we haven't, it seems like we haven't started implementing it yet, but we're really uh, expecting the 80% uh, attend up, attendance on the standups. And it's not for us, but it's for you. Um, if people are not able to organize their time so that they're attending a mandatory session, it actually doesn't speak very well for your uh, future work career. So we can create an opportunity, we can try and give support, but if, if you're not here um, and we're telling you that this is an important thing for work, then mm -hmm. actually, I don't know, I don't know more what else we can do other than showing up at your house and sort of uh, shaking you on the shoulder. So um, yeah, I mean, at some point we have to, <clears throat> we need to implement that and we will, every and team are working on that. But uh, if we don't have people attending 80% of the standups, we're not necessarily going to be able to uh, provide a graduation certificate because it means that we're not, we don't trust that you're really ready for the world of work. Let me give you a little bit of background. If we set up an interview and we put our name out there and say, this person is job ready and they're not able to make sure they're available on time for the interview, you don't necessarily get a second chance. Actually, I'd say in most cases, you don't get a second chance. So. Yeah, I mean, being available on time, every time, it's it's really a minimum standard at the global uh, job readiness level. So wonderful. I'm really happy that people can code really well. We're now going to start emphasizing the second side of it as well. Uh, it's important. It's mandatory. You show up every day on time. It might seem really um, difficult to understand, but it's actually the basic level of expectation. Um, next announcement. So I posted a link to a the partnership announcement with Algorand. So Algorand is uh, has announced our partnership, which we're really happy about. It means that we now have uh, another company which is uh, believing in what we believing actually in you guys, uh, the types of people that we're working with to train and to place into work. And so we would appreciate it if anyone who's interested is able to amplify that on LinkedIn or on Twitter. Just um, just share it or like it because we want uh actually the reason is we want other employers to see it and to say okay look and I'm, I'm ready to interview from these guys because we have uh, another company which is interested in um, which is supporting them so please do amplify that it's good news for us we're going to be announcing another partnership with replit um i believe it'll come out on the weekend and so we should be announcing it next week and next week we're also going to be putting out our own announcements um in parallel uh, so this week, <clears throat> my uh, third announcement, we have our career tracks that we're going to choose next week. So now everyone has done machine learning projects. Everyone has done a Web3 project. This week is a data engineering project. And so next week, we're going to ask slash uh, require everyone to choose one track to optimize all of their application materials for. 
And what that also means is for everyone who's stressing that, look, I haven't figured everything out, I don't know exactly what to do, this is your opportunity to say, okay, I only want to focus on data engineering, so it's okay if I don't understand all of the Web3 stuff in detail. It's good that you understand some of it, a lot of it, as much as you can. You don't need to understand all of it in detail. You probably you have enough knowledge to figure out how things fit together, but then you can optimize what is it that you want to go deep into. So next week, we're going to be choosing uh, our career tracks. And finally, today's debate sessions, um, the main goal of the debate sessions is not to make a point for or against, but it's to practice your interview skills. So one of the most important things that uh, employers tell us is that while you're on an interview, they want to hear how you can speak and they want to hear how you can respond to a live question. And we're going to be practicing that today in small groups. So that's all from my side. Thank you, Arun. Um, anyone else from the Ten Academy team with any announcement? All right, I have one as well. Today, I think it's, uh, I posted it on Slack as well. Today we have a guest speaker uh, who's going to be taking us through um, her experience in building Web3 and her career journey basically in general. So uh, coming back to uh, Arun's point, uh, this session is not meant for for her so it is it, it is usually very respectful if we are able somebody like that with uh with all that experience has made her time to come and uh meet you guys and address any of the concerns you have and share her life journey it, it's usually a quite uh disrespectful if she's she she she's there and you come in late and yet she's meant to to be helping and supporting you and she's doing it willingly. So I would like to request all of us to be available on time. On time is, is, is something I keep on emphasizing because we've seen consistent lateness in these sessions and that will be great to see from you guys. Okay, if there are no any other announcements, now it would be a good time to see some hands up for the people who want to join what they're doing we want to hear from you how far you are with the work, any blockers. Okay, let's go first. Biniam, if you can hear me, okay, just uh, unmute and share with us. Okay, good morning, Mary, uh, Arun. Uh, I'm excited to hear uh, about the new partnerships you're making. Uh, it, gives, it gives us hope as well, and we'll definitely uh, share the link on LinkedIn. So give you an update on <clears throat> my progress. Yesterday, I managed to submit uh, the interim report uh, and uh, I'm going uh, uh, the way I planned so far. So uh, I'm ep uh, optimistic about uh, uh, this week's uh, project. Uh, so far, I have not faced any blockers and that's good. Uh, uh, other than that, I'm enjoying the work and uh, yeah, thank you. All right, thanks for sharing. And I'm glad that you understand how impactful these partnerships are, especially for us as well. Okay, Martin, I see your hand is up. Please unmute and All share right, with uh, us. Okay, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so I've been able to, uh, yesterday what I was working on, I uh, was the terrain visualization and also uh, submitting the interim report uh, I was happy that I was able to uh, do all the do all that was required for the interim report so that I could be able to submit it. Yeah, I was at least that was uh, good. Also, uh, that's uh, also a good thing that at least we are forming more partnerships. That's really nice, and uh, that's uh, just a good heads up. Then, uh, just something that I, I got to learn uh, yesterday is that uh, when interacting, I think it's very good to understand data. It's, it's, it's actually very, very good to understand your data because uh, when I was working with my data, I realized that at times uh, I, the data comes so much, like, you know, and the data is a lot. At times you can uh, confuse, like for me, I was confusing the longitudes from the latitudes. So when the figures were coming, they were coming very weird figures. But uh, when you put the latitudes and the longitudes correctly, uh, it, it actually brings figures that make sense. So 
uh, understanding data is one thing that I've really learned and uh, it's good to understand your data. Yeah, so today what I'll be doing is I'll be working on uh, the, 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 the TWI, that is the uh, Terrain Witness in Topography Witness Index, uh, just uh, so that it can be able to I can be able to ensure that everything is up and running up by the end of, by at least by Friday, it will be able to complete and launch and then I'll be good to go. Yep. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. And uh, thanks for sharing a bit of your experiences while you were doing your work as well. Uh, anyone else willing to go next? Today, I would like to see a lot more intentionality in terms of like hand up, I'm not willing to do the alphabet thing today. So anyone willing to go next? Abo, your hand is up. So feel free to unmute and share. Uh, hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Hello. Perfect. OK. Uh, uh, to give you an update, uh, I started working on the technical portion uh, on Tuesday, after trying to understand the document on Monday, and I submitted the interim submission on time on Wednesday yesterday. And I will uh, attempt to manage finish the final submission, uh, uh, which is due Saturday. So that is uh, what I have. And uh, I have a question uh, for Aaron. Uh, when you mentioned that we will select uh, a special track next week. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you imply that each of us will have a unique project depending on our interest till week 12? I mean, do we choose what we will do until week 12? No. <clears throat> uh, so we're going to continue with the training as it is with the weekly challenges. Um, we do expect to do a capstone project. So we're ending week. When everyone applied, there was three months of training and three months of supported job search phase. So we're now starting to prepare for the job search phase. So by the end of the training, by the 30, 27th of July, Maggie is, you know, the sort of like spice thing that people cook with. Um, yeah, so to answer the most important question, Maggie is a spice mix, uh, has nothing to do with the training. Uh, I launched a couple of polls just for fun. Um, anyone can answer them. So what's gonna happen? So tomorrow, next week we pick, uh, we finish our training on the, I believe it's the 27th of July, whatever the Friday is, it could be the 28th, I don't remember the exact number. Nevertheless, uh, we continue with weekly challenges from now till then. In parallel, our careers work is going to start uh, focusing on getting our materials ready so that you can apply for work. Um, and once the training is over and we go into the supported job search phase, a few things will happen. One is we want everyone to start working on a capstone project so that people are working on a project of their choice which can showcase what they're doing and to keep everyone busy. So that's one. The second is people are gonna be applying for jobs and we're gonna have a regular format where people will have uh, stand-ups. We're currently planning three times a week and also tracking how are people doing and uh, what progress are we making. But um, what we've learned over the past years is that when you apply for jobs, you have to be specific about what type of job do you want. So not only in terms of your materials, but also in terms of the jobs that you're applying for, you have to choose one track. So the person who says, look, I can be whatever you want, I can do Web3 engineering, and I can do data engineering, and or I can do ML engineering, is less likely to be successful than the person who picks one out of the three. And so we want you to choose one out of those three tracks, and then we're gonna start to optimize our CV, our LinkedIn profile, our GitHub profile, our 10 Academy profile, we're going to optimize all of that for that one choice. Okay, thank you, thank you. But <clears throat> I, I guess your follow-up question, and probably a lot of people is like, wait a minute, how can I do that? How can I just pick? Is that true? Abel, are you, is anyone exactly. concerned about that? That's my yeah. question, really. Yeah, you just have to pick. I mean, you've done, as I, <laughs> So you've done now one Web3 project, you've done a data engineering project, and you've done an ML engineering project. <clears throat> Very practically, if the only people who have a choice are the people with a software engineering background, 
if you can do web programming, you can choose. If you can't, if you're not a professional level web, web programmer or you didn't study it, then uh, unfortunately, you're going to have to pick data engineering. Or fortunately, it makes your life a lot easier because industry expects machine learning engineers and Web3 engineers to be web programmers plus either ML engineering or Web3 engineering. So it's only those uh, people who have that background, which we didn't teach, um, who can make that choice. Everyone else goes for data engineering. Okay, is uh, Abel, is your question addressed? Are you happy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. thank you. I just want to make one last point before Rafa mm -hmm. goes. I would. I don't want people to stress too, too much. I mean, there's no, and I, Binyam and I were chatting a little bit on Slack this morning. There's no right or wrong answer. I mean, that, that our whole raison d'etre, our reason for being is to get people their first global level job in a first global level job in a high growth field. Now, all of these are high growth fields and each of them have advantages and disadvantages. But remember, this is your first job. So if you get a data engineering job, it doesn't mean that you have to be a data engineer for life. Um, sometimes you get a job at a company which is better, a small company, big company, remote, not remote. There's so many variables. So let's keep it simple. Let's stay focused on this idea of what am I interested in? What do I think I want to learn more about? And then uh, try and optimize for there. So that's one. The second is I'd really like people not to think that um, there's a hierarchy among these jobs because in our experience, there's no hierarchy in terms of salary. There's no hierarchy in terms of job growth. Um, they're all, they're just doing different things. Well said, well said everyone. Um, okay, so I think we had a, a hand up from Rafa. Rafa, do you want to go straight into sharing? Yeah. Morning, everyone. And mm -hmm. of course, Mari and Aaron. It's just like I missed the best time, but I feel like it's been a while since I joined because of the internet cut off, and I'm so glad that I'm back from today. Uh, so, yeah. Um, it, it's good that Apple has asked because I was about to ask that too. And it's nice that um, what Aaron explained, and for me, actually, it's not really bothering me as much uh, because before joining this training, I had never knew about like data engineer or machine learning or Web3, the three of them. So I'm fine with uh, completing the, all the tasks. And then uh, like, I just like, I would say that I trust in what you see, right? Um, and about the update of uh, this project for this week, week seven, uh, for the Acritech uh, challenge, uh, I think I just, uh, I had somehow understated the idea of uh, loading and fetching the data from the AWS server. And so I just, um, like yesterday the servers weren't up so i wasn't able to do that but i just do it in my local machine the problem is that uh, my laptop now is like really like full running out of memory and i'm trying to maybe today reach one of the tutors to see what exactly i don't need for the next challenge and what i need because otherwise it's just like going to uh, destroy the laptop and um, yeah and uh, thank you really for bringing the guest talks because uh, bringing people from the um, like they are in the field and they really understand that the best uh, especially for the last one yesterday it was really great so yeah that's my whole updates for this week and for today thank you Awesome. Sorry, sorry there. I think I, I might have uh, dropped along the way because of the internet. I didn't hear. Did you have any blockers at all? Did yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah because uh, I was just saying that um, I didn't. I wasn't able to load the fetch the data, the first part of it, which was yeah due to. The first two days of the challenge, I was just trying to understand, so I consumed more time. And then yesterday, I just had to um, load the data, and I, I mean, I have to 
download it from in my local machine. But yeah, like it's running out now. My my PC is running out of memory, so I'm just about I, I was saying that. Okay, so should we say you've sorted out the blocker? Uh, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. And feel free to reach out to um, some of your colleagues if you if you're facing some challenges instead of spending a lot more time trying to figure out on your own. We have a big community. All right, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, all right, and again, to reiterate um, uh, Arun's point, you know, you choosing does not mean you're going to be that for the rest of your life. From my experience, when it comes to work, each work you go through, whether volunteering, whether uh, whether a job, it's a stepping stone to something else, to something better every day. So let's look at it in a very positive and open-minded manner. All right, I can see a lot more hands now. I feel so happy about this. So Samuel, do you want to unmute and go straight ahead? Okay. Hello, Mary and Aaron. Good morning to everyone. Morning. Uh, to give an update from my side, uh, I guess no blockers. Uh, I have to submitted uh, the requirements on time, the tasks. And uh, I want to point out that yesterday was uh, a very great day, like in uh, terms of uh, the tutorials, like pre bringing a previous training and giving us an eye opening. It was very eye opening for me because I didn't know where to start. And he gave us a like, very clear paths on how to do the project and the second one was like the guest talk was very informative like not only how the industry works but how a junior uh, data engineering or other would work and giving us real life examples from previous batch was very great like the two tutorials was very great i liked the uh, so that's up for me All right, thank you so much, Samo, for sharing. Uh, Daisy? I, can I just, I just want to interject really quickly there. Sorry, Mary, to hijack. Uh, I mean, you have to realize that both uh, Laura and or Elle and uh, Chris were su are super happy with the people that they hired from 10 Academy. That's why they're hiring more. So they're not coming for to help us. They're actually coming to help themselves because it's really hard to find good people. So don't underestimate. I mean, we we prepared people and they were able to do really well. So don't underestimate what you're learning and don't underestimate your own abilities. They were there because they actually, they got so much help and it made their work that much better. So yeah, I mean, they were there because they were impressed with the work that people like uh, our graduates were able to do. Thanks for that, Arun. Um, Daisy, do you want to go straight ahead? Um, yes, thank you, Mary. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, uh, so, that's a very good update you have given on the partnerships, Iron. Um, and uh, yesterday it was really good to see how far um, the partnerships span because we see that they're coming back as hiring partners. Um, and also just like Samuel. Well, I'm very grateful. Um, to not go about fishing the data and just more understanding why the data and what's important. Um, on my progress, I was able to make the submission on time yesterday. I had a bit of a block with PDAL today in the morning, but I've been able to resolve that and I've made um, quite a bit of progress and I'm hoping to be able to close on the square today. Um, thank you. That will be it for me. Awesome. And it's great to hear you guys are dressing blockers um, accordingly. Okay, so to Spire, do you want to go straight ahead? Okay, hello everyone. Hello. Okay, uh, good morning. Uh, um, yesterday was actually a good day for me. Uh, in, from uh, the uh, submission point of view, from the tutorial point of view, it was uh, really great. Uh, um, the tutorial uh, gave a lot of ideas on how to go on with uh, the current challenge and uh, it, it gave me a, a little bit of insight so that I could perform well uh, yesterday and uh, I submitted uh, my uh, GitHub my submissions and uh, report uh, early uh, so everything is good by my side. Awesome. 
thanks for sharing your progress this far and good to know that everything is on track um okay salam i see your hand up i'm gonna share your updates and in case of any blockers okay uh, can you hear me yes perfect uh, well, uh, yesterday I managed uh, to do the interim report and also submit a uh, uh, task one, uh, the, the GitHub link, uh, but I had uh, blockers in the past two days. Uh, there was a light outage for a very long period of time, so I wasn't able to uh, proceed uh, to do more of the tasks as I wanted to, but I managed to do um, what I have to submit on yesterday and I'm glad about that and uh, today I'm planning on doing task two and the rest of the tasks. Awesome, thanks for sharing Salam. Um, okay, well it's good to see now we have uh, 33 people on the call. Uh, thanks, guys, for kind of um, reaching out to your fellow teammates to join in. Okay, Yudidia, you're next. You're up next. Okay. Hello, Mary. Hi, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Uh, so just to give an update, I, I have submitted the yesterday's challenge and I've submitted the interim submission, both the report and the GitHub link. but. Uh, regarding the challenge work for the week and the schedule that I've planned, I, I, I can't say that it's still going well. I, I'm being a bit challenged. I'm not exactly sure why I might be a bit exhausted, but jumping from one documentation to another documentation, I'm completely losing what I've been reading before and trying to read that again and again. And uh, I'm, I'm a bit struggling with under, both with understanding the task and implementing uh, the task, but I'll try to refresh up myself today and get ready to work on the implementation for the rest of the task and try to finish up for the, the before the deadline. Okay, Lydia. And have you reached out to anybody at all for assistance yes. in understanding yes. the tasks? I, I've been to reach, to reach out to some trainees and I think they were really helpful, but uh, when coming to the implementation, I'm getting a bit lost. I, there are lots of documentations, uh, especially on the libraries that are that we are trying to uh, build. Some helpful helper libraries, but uh, on the implementation side, I'm getting a bit lost. I, I totally understand when I was reading or researching some materials or some references, but when coming to the implementation, I, I'm, I'm I don't know why, but uh, I had to go back and read what I've been reading before. And that's taking out my time. So you did, yeah. Why don't you? I have a, I have a secret effort. I have a secret for you. Why don't you go take a nap? Uh, uh for, for how long? <laughs> I can tell you that. But if you're tired, then don't waste your time fighting it. Go take a break. Go take a walk. Uh, you have to check your schedule today. You need to attend this the debate thing. But schedule your time so that you go and rest. Go sleep for until you're back and fresh. There's a reason why. All of these big companies also have nap rooms and game rooms, and you're still a human. You're not an AWS instance. So if you're tired, go rest. Don't waste your time fighting yourself, is my advice mm. to you. OK, thank you. Thank yeah. you. But Mary, I think we have our two guest speakers with us. Kate and Elias have joined. So I don't know if we want to, just to make use of their time, why don't we hand over to them, and then we can see if we have time at the end for Matilda and Titus. And we'll schedule a careers uh, one or more careers guest sessions uh, or just open Q&A sessions next week. It sounds good, sounds good. Um, yeah, I can see they're here. So maybe we can start with Kate, if you're able to hear us, over to you. Kate, are you able to hear me okay? You could just unmute if you are. If not, um, probably you can jump straight to Elias. Okay. 
I think it has is having internet connection issues, so I can start. Sounds good. Okay. So yeah, I I'm Elias Andwalem. Uh, I live in Addis. Uh, for the last I think six or seven months, uh, I've been working at Pivot as a data engineer. Uh, yeah, at Pivot, Pivot produces microbes like the feed plants, uh, nitrogen. And the main idea is like to replace like a reliance on synthetic fertilizers that are produced in factories and that cause a lot of pollution. Uh, on top of that, like our microbes are feed nitrogen to the plant like throughout the growing season of the plant. So like they are more efficient than like synthetic nit nitrogen. So yeah, uh, and our main work main, mainly focus on uh, analyzing field trials like Pivot runs like hundreds of field trials yearly, uh, and there are data coming from these field trials, like uh, one biomass and uh, tissue measurements that are taken in a destructive method and coming from the labs. So those data are take those data data are collected like at different growth stage of the plant. So we work on like pre-processing that data and also doing some analysis and doing some reports uh, and also there are different type of data like UAV and uh, LiDAR data the one you are working on uh, and we also do some analysis with this data and yeah like if they are sufficient enough to repl replace like the destructive methods of collecting data uh, yeah we mainly work on yeah field, da field, da field data yeah, I think it can go on. Yeah, so I'm having some internet connectivity challenges, but I hope you can hear me. Um, yeah, my name is Kate Mujaki. I am based in Nairobi, Kenya. I was in the batch four for an academy, so it's um, been quite a journey. Like I last mentioned, we work together at Pivot. We handle the data engineering request for our data science team so i don't know if i'm repeating myself from what i left said but um basically we work a lot with the soil data field data um uav data lidar data just so that we can be able to actually ascertain that pivot products actually do work and for that you need a lot of different data um, yeah, and in relation to the, the project that you're doing this week, um, I actually realized that the bonus task, the one for um, working on the building a package for the USGS soil data, the SAGO team is actually something I'm working on right now. So basically, the same thing about building a Python package. I think we, we lost Kate. Kate, are you able to hear us? Elias looks very satisfied that Ethiopian internet is better than Kenyan internet. Look at it, look at his sense of satisfaction. <laughs> Thank you. She's back. Oh. Sorry about that. Where did I? Hello. You were saying that the bonus task is something that uh, you're working, thinking of doing right now, the Python package. Right. Yeah, the USGS world um, task is something we're actually working or building on right now. So it was nice seeing it part of the project. Uh, yeah. Do you have any questions or unless what do you want to talk about next? Can you come again? I mean, I, I didn't. 
I was just going to say, in terms of background, I think the idea was more to give, uh, so I think you guys have provided a bit of background, but it's also a chance for Q&A and also to situate the work that the trainees are doing this week in terms of, I mean, is it actually useful and how do real companies do data engineering stuff? Because I think, I mean, a year ago, you were in the same situation where it still seems like, okay, why are we, you know, doing wax on, wax off, doing all this funny stuff? How is this useful? And also a chance for people to ask questions to you guys. Uh, okay, so like the, so I was like currently working on, not currently working on, I've completed like two tasks working with LiDAR data. So the main intention with the LiDAR or UAB data is like, like how I was trying to say earlier. So we have destructive methods for collecting data and doing some analysis and trying to do product decision but those are like one labor intensive uh, they are not that much accurate because human is involved so the main goal with the lidar or uav data is like to be able to re replace those destructive methods with these methods one they are really accurate because human is not that much involved and also it's not labor intensive uh, so yeah we the company goal is like to mainly be able to like replace those like destructive data collection methods with uav measurements and lidar data um maybe i'd add that um in relation to data engineering i think Ella and i talked about this earlier that data engineering is very company specific so like for us, we don't really interact with the complex tools like Kafka or Airflow or Spark. We mostly, our engineering tasks are with Python related. So it involves a lot of automating processes that are currently manual in the company and, uh, and also like building packages that can be able to connect to APIs, so from cell APIs to weather APIs. Um, and then querying data from this um, API. So for us, we don't really interact with other tools other than Python specifically, yeah. Uh, William has a question. William, sorry. Yeah, uh, okay. Thank you guys uh, for sharing. Uh, I just have one question uh, to ask you guys. Uh, just about a year ago, uh, you've been like uh, where we are right now. So uh, I want to know exactly how your expectations evolved over time and uh, uh, compared to what you expected in the past, uh, how did you find the work, uh, the field in general? And uh, uh, were you first uh, planning to become a data engineer from, from the get-go or uh, did the program change your mind in the middle? Uh, and so if so, what, what aspect of the program changed your mind? Um, so for me, joining an academy, I actually expected to go towards data science more um but after doing like Ella and i actually do things like i'm doing more software engineering right now um with a bit of data science but Ella is doing more data science yet she has a software engineering background it's been interesting that we tend to explore um basically things we really didn't think we'd be interested in going forward but in relation to STEM Academy, I think it's okay. The work working isn't as intense as STEM Academy. It's not really intense, so it you'll find that um, you're able to manage your time really well after STEM Academy, and then you're also able to learn how to do your research well when you're trying to build a project. Um, but yeah, STEM Academy is a great experience in terms of the planning curve and yeah you're, you're you're almost able to do any project after the academy <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I think that's pretty much accurate. Uh, at Ten Academy, like our weekly challenges were like really intensive. Uh, and at the end of the week, you have to just complete your task and then move on. Like, but like working at Pivot right now, like one, it's like a team, everyone is collaborating. We have team meetings. And if you are facing any challenge, it's like a challenge for everyone. It's not something you have to just go ahead and uh, like handle it on your own. So like there is more of a team spirit working in a company different, which is different from like the training. Uh, the other thing is like any challenge you face or like if you need more time and stuff like that and you don't also have to like overwork or like work 12 or 15 hours like at 10 academy we're like working 16 hours or something like at some time so yeah that part is pretty much different uh, and like once you go through like the challenge and be able to like do well on them i think you can handle any challenge like in the work world because it's like this one is not like a training everyone is your team and everyone's trying to like trying to help you to like come up with a good result and move on yeah that's okay thank you both guys uh, just to add one more thing um, uh, so the were you planning to become data engineer from the get go or uh, is that something uh, you decided to do uh, why we took the training? Okay, so we, when we joined Pivot Bio, like the only position that was available was data engineer. So that was so it was just the only option available. But like after joining, even if our title is like a data engineer, for example, for me, like. If I look at it, what I've working, what I've been working on for like the last seven months, most of them are like more towards data science than like more of data engineering. Uh, and also sometimes we work, we, we work on creating some packages, which is more towards software engineering than like data engineering. So I think when you join like a big company or something, if it, the company is really big, then those titles might matter. You might only work on data engineering. But if you are like getting into some startups, I don't think that like if they are really that much clearly structured enough that even though like you are a data engineering, maybe you might work on some machine learning sometimes. Uh, sometimes you'll be making some packages and stuff. So the titles are not that much as accurate as like they thought. We might experience something else. Okay, thank you guys very much. Martin, Lisa also has a question. All right, uh, thank you, uh, Kate, and uh, thank you, Elias, for coming. Thanks. Uh, yeah, so I, I had a question that uh, I wanted to ask concerning this uh, work life uh, balance. Like, uh, are there like times maybe where you will end up uh, working for practically a whole day or is it like how like can you just give me like a day in your life like for example in an average day that is an average day in your life uh that was what i wanted to ask then also i wanted to i wanted to know about uh like how that that transition between uh an academy to pivot by how did you guys are uh, like uh, how was that transition yeah okay i can go uh, i think the transition from ten academy pivot by was like for us we had like ada she is not here now but she was like a bachelor graduate and like she was helping us from the start and she was in the company so that was pretty much helpful for us like whenever we face any challenge or anything company related like we just contact her and ask her how to approach things so that was extremely helpful for us uh, regarding the work-life balance like for example for me i used to always work on like weekend and and the stuff but like on that also like ada just told me like she never like replies an email or anything on the weekends so that is like you have to you have to like make a line that you don't pass and also you don't really have to overwork yourself but like that comes with experience i think 
Um, I'd like to add that uh, also working for a company that's around 10 hours behind means that you won't have the professional eight to five. So, and I, I think that we appreciate Pivot for also being considerate about the time difference. Um, so we really have evenings, uh, summer daily, around twice. And then it helps that LS and I are in the same time zone, so it's easy for me to reach out in case I have a blocker. Um, so we usually have meetings like twice a week with LS. Um, but yeah, the transition was very smooth in terms of mentioned about the work life balance. I don't think anyone job would ever be as intense as an academy. So it's, it's, it's really, it's much easier, like outside an academy than it was inside. And it's nice that you got to experience the intensity of an academy because it's pretty much easier after. Um, yeah, hope that answers your question. I think Malaku is raving. Okay. Okay. Uh, good morning, Katyn Elias. So, uh, uh, I don't know if, if you have answered this question before because I wasn't able to be in the meeting yesterday. So, uh, my question is what are the skills if you I'm asking for an advice. So what are the skills as a data engineer that you think it's best to focus? For example, if someone wanted to join an academy batch six, I know what advice I would give them. So I think you should focus on this mainly and these are an extra skills. So as, as a junior role, what are the skills that you think it's best to focus? Uh, you, yes, go ahead. Uh, so I think the first thing is like for us, like we don't really really use much tool that much tools. Like we work purely with like Python and like there were some packages I was making in R. So knowing some programming language and like being really proficient at it is like one important thing. Uh, the other thing would be like being able to like also communication skills really matter like so like whatever you did if you can't really communicate with others and get some help from other people then you will really face a challenge so communication skills and knowing like your programming skills I think those are the main ones and also like if you are doing data analysis then you have to know some statistics so yeah, those, I think those are the main things. And also like willingness to learn, like sometimes you would be told to read about something from some paper and do some analysis or something. So like at the moment you'd be, you should be able to like go ahead and do your research and then le learn and apply what you learned on what you are working on. So yeah, the main thing would be your ability to learn, I think. Do you have anything to add? Or? Um, I agree with the, especially the willingness to learn. Um, because we really interact with different kinds of data, so you really need to always be ready to consume a lot of content on because the project really varies again. So once you're done with another task, you're doing a completely different thing. So just having that willingness to learn is of emphasis. But like we mentioned, we don't really use the complex not really complex but you don't use the, the normal data engineering tools just use python and sometimes are um yeah there's a question in the group for you okay yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay thank you guys thank you Elias. thank you kate for your time uh, I just want, I just have one question, especially on the learning that was, that you guys were talking about. Uh, how is the learning curve at Pivot Bio? Not from other resource or material, but I think everyone is working remotely, right? So, yes. 
So if everyone is working remotely, how are you guys learning more from your seniors than you, you may learn from other resources, but how is the learning curve going for you from senior machine learning or data science or even data engineering engineers at Pivot Bio? Or are you guys learning all by yourself? Um, I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes, I, I can hear oh. you. I because Ella has frozen, so I was wondering. Um, but because we deal, we work with multiple people, like we said, we assist our team. It means that we tend to interact with a lot of um, different departments. So that means that you end up interacting with people doing different things. So like I was just mentioned, we work to use and lender data. So you learn about that. We also work to find data so you get to learn about how to connect to specific APIs. Um, so by basically working, doing different projects, you get to learn so much from different team members because we, do, we don't have like a specific um, field or department we work with, we work with different um, kinds of data. Yeah, on top of that, like we have like mentors, like directly helping us through like learning about the company, like learning how to handle different tasks uh, and the other thing is uh, every task has an owner, meaning like that you would be like reporting every progress you made on working on the task to like the owner of the task that means you'll be communicating a lot with that person and you'll be learning a lot from them so yeah even though it's remote you still get to learn from each other and yeah all right thank you okay. so i think there was another question for me like having software engineering degrees is it necessary or nothing is really necessary because if you have the knowledge by yourself that is enough and software engineering is like one of the things that like you have insane amount of resources online that you might be able to learn but the other real challenge would be like having the motivation to like to go through all the resources by your own is going to be a little bit a challenge so maybe if you are working on something similar then you you'll be learning for that for to do that thing but i don't think it's necessary but still helpful um i can see okata hi okata <laughs> she has a question for us um can you speak about what the transition field looked like for you after the academy the interviews especially um Huh, hello, I need to think about this one. Maybe you should go first. Uh, uh, okay, so the interview especially, okay. Our interview, like the way I remember it is like mainly the, we, were, we were initially given a challenge document, uh, which is like really related to like what the company does after joining, like it was pretty much the data the data was uh, coming from labs. It, so after doing the challenge, then the in, on the interview, there was just some self-introduction initially. But after that, it was just explaining what we've done on like the taxes they gave us. And like after looking at the process we went through, how we managed to like uh, solve the problem. I think there were like for mine, the way I remember it is like they were happy with what I did and that was like the main thing on the interview like the like nine almost 80 percent of the interview was like discussing the challenge yeah I'd like to add to that that how you present your code really really matters a lot like if you're able to because um, the only way you can prove that you can code is that they will give you a project or a challenge to do. And how you, how your work flows, how you present it, how you're able to communicate what you've done is really important. Because at the end of the day, we want someone who, who can code and communicate what they've done. 
um, and also making sure that you answer the, the question that has been asked um, from the chat room. So yeah, with the interviews, um, yeah, definitely how you present your code is very important. Um, and also having the knowledge for data engineering or whatever really you're trying to do data science, you need to have math knowledge and statistics. But basically for me, it was how you present your code and how you're able to communicate what you've done. Um, yeah, there's another question. I don't know, Kasha, do you feel like we've answered your question? Oh, yes, yes, you have. Thank you. Okay. What are the challenges you faced, you faced working with a culture of Korean? Um, I, maybe the time difference, I guess. And sometimes you can't relate to the, to the jokes we make because you don't live there. <laughs> Um, but it's not it's not anything serious, but maybe the time difference. Um, and it helps that LS is an African and when it's easy for us to relate to things like um power failure or you know, something people from the developed countries have never experienced. So if I tell LS that today I don't have lights, you'll we'll understand. Um I don't know, LS you feel like there's something else, another challenge. N not challenge, but I, I remember on one meeting, like I had a power failure and I was trying to explain it and he wasn't understanding it. Like, why don't you turn it <laughs> on? <laughs> yeah, that, that happens. Uh, yeah, so I, don't, I wouldn't even say this. It's just coming from different worlds, I guess. Uh, yeah. Is there another question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Stella, Stella, I can see your hand up. I think this will be the last question we are taking on uh, for the interest of time so that we are able to go into the next activity. So, Stella, go right ahead. Okay. Uh, hello, Kate and Elia. Um, it's really nice to hear that um, the academy really helped you in getting a good job. Um, I'd like to know, are there any specific things that you did during the job search and after the projects at Ten Academy that have, have contributed majorly on your careers and maybe any pointers on what we can do during the three month period when we are job searching? Um, I can maybe you was not one thing and then I left it. Mm -hmm. and during that period at Second Academy, I remember I spent a lot of time trying to find proof my guitar. Because, you know, we, obviously, we win the, when you're doing a project, sometimes the time isn't enough. But after now, you're done with Second Academy. So, like, if someone else is to look at your, your GitHub repository, then you can use it to actually understand what is being done. Or the, whatever solution you're trying, problem you're trying to solve. So that's one thing I really uh, spent a bit of time doing. Um, yeah, so let's in here. Yeah. Uh, okay, the one thing, like, I remember on the interview, like, uh, people that, that were interviewing me mentioning, like, going through my GitHub and, like, liking the way I document things and stuff. So, like, yeah. when you go to interview, people would just check your GitHub. Uh, and if there are blog posts that you wrote on some things, so those things help. Like those things can show that you can, you your core quality is good. You can communicate clearly. So like you want to have things that show that. And I think that those are the main things you have to focus on. Like improving your profile, uh, having like some blog posts in which you explain some things you worked on, and also working on your GitHub. Like even if a good do like on your code you have to have a good documentation like a code without your documentation is like literally like meaningless so and people will look into that before the interview so yeah i think those are the main things okay thank you so much uh 
Yes, I see your hand is up. You want to take like 30 seconds. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Katie and uh, Ines. Uh, I just want to add, add one question for the last. Uh, how do you guys approach your uh, personal blockers with your boss, especially? You may uh, be unwell, you may, your internet connections, machines, and the like may be a blocker on your work. So, how do you approach those things with your manager? I think it's just directly communicating any challenge you are facing and like trying to minimize the challenges because like I'm just saying like my internet is not working or something. So yeah, but like clearly if you clearly communicate with anyone, like people would be understanding as much as like you don't yeah. have the limit. Because if you are not producing a result, then like you're now working. Okay. Yeah. I think it's okay. Yeah, they're really understanding. I think if I don't have electricity, there's really nothing much I can do about it. But change the initiative or maybe suggesting we reschedule the meeting to a later time or the next day. So just basically just communicating because they, it's, I think it's, it's important to be able to communicate within a challenge with your team members. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. All right, guys, thank you so much. Um, and I would say thank you, Kate and Elias, Elias for, for making the time to, uh, to speak to our trainees. And I hope we've learned uh, one or two something. And I would say like the key take out from uh, the brief discussion we've had, um, I think from the two of you, one thing that has come up again and again is there is like uh, how essential teamwork is learning how to work in a team. It doesn't matter how good you might be in your coding. If you're not helping your teammates, and coming back to your words, and yes, you're not helping your teammates uh, to over a goal of the company, then uh, you, you might not be the best fit for the job, even though you have the skill. And also something else we learned from the both of you is about the attitude to learn. Of course, uh, also, personally, and the experience when it comes to work out here, you find that yeah, companies might hire you for the potential you have and the attitude towards learning because learning never stops. So you might not be the most skilled person, but once they see there's room for learning with you and attitude for learning, you might be the best fit for the job. And 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 also important enough to answer the questions that have been asked. I think it's something that we keep on uh, uh, discussing even throughout our training here um, uh, in terms of like when you're given challenges, uh, first understand the challenge before you respond because it also applies. It. It's good that you reiterate. It also applies in the workplace that, uh, you know, you need to do a job that you've understood because the results are specific. And unless you understand, we live in specific. And last but not least, you know, it's interesting that you've raised the situation where, you know, in case of power, what does it happen and how does it work? And thank you for reiterating that, you know, it's important to uh, avoid as much as you can excuses when it comes to workplaces. You know, if it's power failure, it's sometimes good to show do you have any backup. What is the plan that you have? You might not be there. Maybe there's power outage and you're like, okay, I'm not able to do it now, but you provide uh, the next steps on what you're going to do. So again, maybe uh, to bring it back to the context of the training, even for uh, situations like maybe you're having an issue with your submissions, it's also the way you practice communicating to your managers whenever you're having blockers. Don't wait until somebody gets to you and like, okay, hey, you missed your submission, what's up? But you can take the first initiative and like, okay, hello guys, I'm facing this ABC problem. We are having a um, like an out, uh, a power outage for the whole week. I won't be able to do this, but this is what I plan to do once the blocker is done. So thank you, thank you very much to you both for making this. And I hope for everybody it's been, um, 
very informative. Unless we have any announcements, any announcements from the Ten Academy team? All right, so I assume we do not have any announcements. And again, thank you very much, Kate and Elias. And guys, see you later um, in the next session. I think it will start in the next 25 minutes. See you later then. All right, goodbye, guys. Bye. 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 Thank you for having us. For having us.